so friends uh, first thing is that when you are logged in okay uh, you need to uh, go to the directory which is slash opt slash sap and from this directory there is a file called sybase.sh you need to execute this file what this file consists of is this file contains the all the environment variables and settings which are required for the sybase server uh, to uh, running the sybase server and setting the environment variables and paths and everything so that you will be able to issue the commands which are required so and on that current context so dot space dot slash sybase dot dot sh this is the file which you need to execute the way i demonstrated so dot space dot slash sybase dot sh this will execute the file and now you have to start the server and to start the server the command is first you need to, you can check whether the server is running or not then check show ser uh, server so if the server is running you will be able to see the details so in my case the server is currently running so that sh shows that current server name is oracle you can see that uh, my current default server is oracle which is by the name of host name okay so this server is running and where the default directory is this you can see the path okay the configuration file is located here and the uh, memory settings are here okay that so you can see all the details uh, from where it is starting the server now what if it is not started yet then you can execute this command uh, which is slash opt slash sap slash ase hyphen 16 underscore 0 slash install slash run underscore oracle so run underscore is the default uh, keyword or default word followed by the server name so by default when you do the installation as a default setting with the default settings the name of the server would be the host name of your machine so if the host name is oracle it will uh, give the name of the server as oracle in my case or in your case also the machine name is or the host name is oracle therefore if you don't make changes into the settings your server name would be oracle only and you will get this file run underscore oracle so when you execute this file it will start the oracle server and uh, that is it now once you have executed these two commands one is uh, uh, the script sybase.sh and second is running the server once you have done that you can start your dbisql which is a gui based query analyzer and uh, uh, gui based uh, uh, query editing and uh, monitoring and working tool it's a simple tool which is of great help if you are doing it for the first time and because if you are not comfortable with a text based uh, uh, working then uh, you should work with the GUI based utility so here you can type the username and the password which I given Sybase and rest of the settings I can uh, keep the default and I can go to tools and click on test options and it will check and test the option and uh, I can check that test connection so connection failed right now let's see that uh, once again tools test connection so let's see the details why it is failed attempted to connect using oracle.example.com encryption this so login failed examine the SQL warning and execute uh, the region again I just tried this for a few minutes back and it was working fine so uh, just uh, uh, let me try once more okay I will simply stop the server okay and I'll see that stop server and restart again because I work successfully on this yes true yeah when you try when you start, start this when you give this command start server you have to provide the file name hyphen f with the same run server file name if you have multiple servers if you simply say start server it will start the default server 
but if you have multiple servers then you have to provide the file name the way I demonstrated yesterday okay so let me try to connect first with ISQL ISQL hyphen U S A hyphen P Sybase hyphen S Oracle and let me see if it is able to connect I'm able to connect here okay so that means it's working fine so there also I might have typed something wrong so I can start and I'll show you right away and it will work there is no reason that it will not work so uh, I can uh, type here any command like uh, uh, sp underscore help this will show me the uh, this uh, help file same way I can uh, use the database pubs2 which is default installation uh, pubs2 database go and uh, now I can uh, select the table I select star from authors which is a table under this table and go it will work the point is I'm connected so uh, and quit from here will quit and let me try that uh, if I missed something dbisql okay dbisql there was no reason that it should not connect because I, I just worked before I started no it, it worked and it was working fine yeah it will work fine because I have not changed the default username yeah connection succeeded right you can see that so might be typo when I typed the password might be something wrong at that time because I, everything worked fine so here uh, we are my friends this is master database and these are the default databases which are, uh, you can work on right now. So master database, model database, pubs2, pubs3, sang1 which I created and uh, system uh, Sybase man management DB, Sybase system DB and Sybase system processes, uh, this, uh, procedures DB. And uh, not only that we have a lot of tools available here, options and uh, lookup table name, lookup edit query and uh, favorites. So a lot of things are available, import export facility is there, SQL execute procedure and uh, you can see that disconnect from here. Okay, for example if I go to the tools and uh, go to that uh, uh, query edit query option, I can see that a uh, lot of things here, these are the query uh, uh, programming tool, you can uh, make the queries here directly. So uh, this is how we work here, I'll uh, come back to this uh, right now, it is just a starting point, if I want to issue a command here. I'll simply select the database on which I want to issue the command and I'll type the command and simply say go. Okay, so for example, select star from authors. Okay, and go. Once I click on that, I can select this and say go. It will execute that and I'll see the result in a very beautiful manner. So uh, that is what I'll come back to more options on this. So let me start the session uh, now. Okay. <coughs> so my friends uh, this is configuration objective of the session is to understand the configuration parameters and check various settings and where these options are available where how to change parameters and values the configuration setting for the server so the configuration parameters the most important thing for any optimization or any work as a DBA when you are working as DBA this is the uh, most crucial part because throughout this training we will be working with parameters and we will be changing them okay so the configuration parameters define the server wide settings and they are divided into two categories and it is uh, I think it is applicable for all servers so they are static and dynamic all the static variables or static parameters are stored into the uh, table called sysconfigure. All the dynamic configuration parameters are stored into the table sys 
current configure so these are the two tables sys configure and sys current configure if i go to the same screen and i try that select all select a star from sys configure and select a star from sys current configure i will be able to see this uh, these parameters okay we can when we can change these values and uh, configuration values are also stored into this file .cfg server name .cfg the file which we created yesterday also if you remember and uh, with that uh, resource file and the file which we moved uh, while running the server .cfg asc1.cfg if i if you remember that and every time you modify the file every time you modify the configuration file the value of current cfg file will be saved as uh, .001 and say so and so forth like .002 .003 so if you have multiple time if you change the settings multiple times you will have multiple files with this name so if you see in your directory the multiple files with this uh, same server name .001 .002 that means you have changed the values these many times and the actual effective values will appear into .cfg file we cannot start the ase without a valid cfc file always have the backup for config file and which by default also cybis takes care of it and will uh, have the backup files available sp configure displays the reset configuration parameters you can restrict the number of parameters that sp uh, sp configure displays by using that uh, display level to set your display level to one of the either basic or intermediate or comprehensive okay so uh, let's try simple sp underscore configure okay let's see that first directly so sp underscore configure okay go now if i simply type without any parameter i have shared the screen sorry sorry give me one minute i just forgot to share the screen yeah if i type this sp underscore configure okay and i uh, press uh, this uh, i can see the parameter list so uh, run button so this way you will see the parameters and these are the parameter names this is all the parameters which are set currently enable current dump transaction so configuration value the unit and type okay and we can select these parameters this is result set 1 result set 2 so different result sets are available different categories of parameters are there you can spend hours to understand these and uh, definitely as a dba you if you are master of these parameters and the settings of these parameters then definitely you you will be able to uh, optimize your server in the best way and uh, uh, you will be the uh, uh, excellent person in order to support your team and in order to do the troubleshooting and optimizing and performance tuning so to my understanding you need to understand my job is not to understand these parameters my point is that where the parameters are stored and definitely there are hundreds and thousands of parameters so you have to categorize them and i will discuss each of these parameters i mean not all but some of the parameters are which are most crucial for example the memory related parameters and other para device related parameters i'll discuss them uh, in detail so right now objective is to uh, identify the where the parameters are stored how can we fetch the values do we have the group of parameters and if we want we can how can we show selected groups only so to understand the concept of parameters this is the agenda this is the objective of this okay let me come back so we have uh, we can specify the level using sp underscore display level to set the display level to one of basic intermediate or comprehensive so we have two commands now one is sp underscore configure which will display the values to set the level we can use sp underscore display level okay that's how it should work next and these are the values my friends how can you invoke this uh, sp underscore configure the, you can use simple sp underscore configure which i uh, demonstrated it will display all configuration parameters by group the different result sets were there you can you could see that so each of the uh, result set were displaying you know one group of parameter their current values default values the values to which they have the most recently been set etc 
you can invoke the same procedure uh, with the parameter also within double code like uh, sp underscore configure space parameter it will display the current value the default value most recently changed value the amount of memory used by the specified parameter means specific parameter so if you know the parameter you can uh, simply specify that parameter as an argument uh, when you are calling this procedure sp underscore configure then we have a, a another way of calling this procedure same like sp underscore configure space parameter within double quote comma value so you can invoke this like this also it will reset the parameter to a value that means to change the parameter you can use this sp underscore configure followed by space followed by parameter within double quote followed by the value you can also call this uh, with three parameters which wherein you can use this sp underscore configure uh, then followed by parameter followed by comma followed by zero followed by the default this will reset the specified parameter to its default value that means this is crucial uh, when you have changed a parameter and you forgot what was the default value so you can invoke this procedure with this uh, uh, zero comma default these two additional parameters will set the default value of the parameter same way if the parameters are uh, categorized into groups so if you want to sp uh, display specific group only so it will display all the parameters by using this sp underscore configure group name now if i want to check for example uh, my group is memory if i want to display all the parameters uh, related to memory i can do so by specifying uh, this uh, uh, sp underscore configure space memory let me show you that sp underscore configure and i'll call it by memory space memory so what will happen is it will display only memory related parameters so i must give it in double quote because uh, it gave me a warning it was not error but it was a warning and if I give it in double quote it says the configuration option not unique that's why it is displaying the group of all the vari variables uh, in the category uh, in the group of memory so these are all memory related parameters so that means if I want to understand memory parameters only so additional network memory additional uh, allocate max shared memory comp uh, compression memory size engine memory log size heap memory per user kernel resource memory max memory we will understand this in a separate topic because we have a dedicated session in understanding this memory related parameters. Okay. So let's continue. Invoking this, uh, uh, you can specify the group name also the way I specified just now, the memory. Then we can invoke this SP configure configuration file, zero sub command and file name what does it mean it means that if you have some parameters stored in a file and you want to set all the parameters based on the settings which are stored in a file you can invoke it by using this uh, configuration file name uh, comma, comma zero sub command the sub commands uh, i'll discuss these sub commands and file name i'll discuss these options in the uh, coming up slides okay now syntax element which i discussed as we configure include a variety of variables to help you configure sp uh, sap ase uh, one is the parameter i talked about it the value integer within the valid range of parameters okay and group name is the name of the group any group in the parameter hierarchy now sp underscore configure pa passes each parameter as you know a wild card percentage parameter percentage that means uh, it will try to fetch all the possible links whatever you specify for example even if you specify simply mem that's it so it will try to fetch any parameter related to that so it will use that parameter as a wild card so you may not be uh, you know uh, specifying the exact value as you can simplify uh, you know uh, starting value or some some wild card entry some expression can be specified while fetching the parameters then examples of group uh, return value uh, returns the values of uh, configuration parameters that include uh, the group for example the uh, lock or a group such as lock shared memory if i specify simply the lock it will say lock shared memory number of locks lock promotion so uh, you can specify like this if you say 
sp underscore configure lock. So wherever the lock word is appearing, it will display all the parameters with that. So you can invoke this uh, with a simple word, whatever you feel that you want to display all the parameters containing that word or part of the word. Okay, That's how you can say the value. Configuration file with sp underscore configure. You can use as, uh, this uh, interactively by providing uh, a configuration file. And the advantages of using a configuration files are uh, it, it will replicate a specific configuration across multiple servers using the same configuration file that is the advantage. That means if you are managing multiple servers and you want to use the same configuration settings for multiple servers, it's better you store these parameters in a file. Use a configuration file as a baseline for testing configuration values on your server. So that will again, uh, rather than changing each parameters one by one, you can store these parameters in a file. Okay. And then execute the uh, call this file to check the baseline. Okay. Then you can use the configuration file to perform validation checking on parameter values before the actually setting the values. So again, this is validation checking. Same way you can create multiple configuration files and switch between them as your resource needs changes. So this is a very good idea to keep uh, the configuration settings in multiple files and then calling server with uh, separate files each time based on your changing needs. Using file with sp configuration, the syntax was sp config. Uh, I, I, I'm just uh, recollecting the syntax which was in the last line. So that I can explain this last line carefully again. SP underscore configure space configuration file comma zero comma sub command comma file name. Where the configuration is the name of the configuration file. Zero is required. Actually it is for backward compatibility. There is no significance otherwise. The sub command is either write or read or verify or restore. Now write means you create a file. With the current configuration means you are not actually using that you are simply creating the file rather than using the file so it is a good idea that if you don't know the settings and you want to capture all the settings you can capture all the settings by calling this uh, procedure by creating a file out of the current settings by using this write sub command so if i want to create a file with the name let's say sample file so i can use sp underscore configure sample.cfg or sample.txt comma zero comma write and file name okay so and the second option is read perform validation checking on the value contained in the file verify validation uh, validation checking the value in the file name now this file name this is basically for validation checking and conjunction by any sum command that means this file compared with this file so if you want to compare, you can supply this additional argument, the file name. As I said, restore means create file name with most recently configured values. So you can use this uh, restore command also. Now this file name, which is specified here, last parameter, it specifies the configuration file to use in conjunction with this any sub command. If you do not specify a directory as a part of the file name, the directory where SAP ASC was started will be used as the file name, uh, the location. Okay. Examples of using the files uh, that will help you understanding this a little more uh, clearly. Let's perform a validation checking on values in the file srv.cfg. So I have a file srv.cfg and I want to check the values uh, uh, of uh, this file srv.cfg. And read the parameter that pass validation into the server. Current run values are substituted for the values that do not pass the validation checking. So therefore, we can use the syntax uh, sp configure configuration file uh, read srv.cfg. So that means we are reading the values from this file and performing a read check or validation check against the current configuration files. This is first option. Second example is let's create a file server.cfg, my server.config and write current configuration values. Okay. The server is using into that file. 
सो एस पी कॉन्फिगर कॉन्फिग्रेशन फाइल कॉमा जीरो राइट माई सर्वर डॉट कॉन्फ्लिक सो इट विल क्रिएट दिस माई सर्वर अंडर स्कोर माई अंडर स्कोर सर्वर डॉट कॉन्फ्लिक विल क्रिएट दिस फाइल ओके एडिटिंग द कॉन्फिग्रेशन फाइल द कॉन्फिग्रेशन फाइल इज एन आस्काई टेक्सट फाइल सो यू कैन सिंपली एडिट इट यूजिंग एनी योर फेवरेट एडिटर एडिटर टेक्सट बेस्ड एडिटर एंड सिंटेक्स इज पैरामीटर नेम इज इक्वल टू वैल्यू ओके एंड इफ इट इज डिफॉल्ट वैल्यू यू कैन स्पेसिफाई डिफॉल्ट दैट्स इट एग्जाम्पल्स फॉर एग्जाम्पल इफ आई वॉन्ट टू स्पेसिफाई दैट ट्रांजेक्शन कैन रिट्राई इट्स अटेम्प्ट टू एक्वायर अ लॉक वन टाइम when deadlocking occurs during an index page split or shrink you can set this value with this parameter deadlock space entries is equal to 1 this is one example second is uh, specify that default value for the parameter cpu accounting flush interval should be used so C, uh, with the default value so cpu accounting flush interval is equal to default so this way you can set the values in the configuration file example i demonstrated this also sp underscore configure memory and it's it displayed that uh, memory parameter all the variables uh, uh, all the configuration parameters of this group memory okay and the, look at the red color uh, importantly the maximum memory is this default is this memory available is this used is this much configuration settings uh, configuration value is this okay and uh, value uh, the unit is this uh, page is 2k and the type is dynamic so you can see that the headings against that and you can check that so if i specify max memory i'll be able to see only this particular parameter so i i can specify sp underscore configure space within double quote max space memory i can see only one parameter okay example cache configuration you can adjust the size of the default data cache dynamically for example to allocate 900 mb to the default data cache you can use the following command sp underscore cache config the default data cache config uh, default data cache this is the name of the parameter exactly same way the way you used sp underscore configure you can use sp underscore cache config and uh, this is setting the value uh, 900 and go simple command example uh, sp underscore cache config default data cache and go you will see the default uh, settings for cache configuration values cache name status type configuration value run value so you can see that this will help you in understanding the default cache configuration values example example of creating a user defined cache and the associated pools you can use this as sp underscore cache config temp db underscore log underscore cache this is the name of the parameter comma the value 500 mb comma log only relaxed cache part uh, this partition is equal to 1 so these are the parameters to specify user defined cache and associated pools go since it is a log cache it should be mainly made up of 4k buffer pools and some 16k buffer pools as well so you can use this uh, different settings okay and you can practice that once i complete this uh, session i'll appreciate if you do the installation and you practice this uh, configuration settings and you get well versed with the displaying the values and changing the values and storing the values in a file uh, of the configuration settings configuration parameters cache configuration if you want to display the configuration uh, parameter values you can simply use display information about this cache sp underscore cache config space temp db underscore log underscore cache this will display the values and go and it will display the uh, current settings now to check the number of devices you can use this sp underscore configure space devices so you'll see the devices okay sp underscore configure devices same way user connections so sp underscore configure is a parameter is a stored procedure which can be used it can be used to display a category what i suggest is you default well, you, to start with this you simply issue sp underscore configure once you have done that you will see the group of parameters then you try one by one group by group 
and then you try individual parameters and partially uh, without giving the complete name of the parameter that will help you in understanding different parameters because as we know uh, with Linux and Unix and the command line things it is more we practice more we learn and more confident we become that is why I am not wasting time in demonstrating these commands because I believe that these are very simple things and you can uh, you should spend more time rather than me explaining these parameters and more time you will spend more experience you will be thank you so much for watching this and uh, now uh, I am giving you half an hour time to complete that installation and uh, uh, I'll get back to you after half an hour. If you have any doubt, you can ask me right now so that uh, you complete the installation before I start uh, the next session. Yes. Anybody, any question? Yeah. Mohit. No, no, until no, it will not do that. You have to call that with the right parameter. Not necessary. I said, as I said, uh, let me go by step by step. When you call, now I will generally explain the concept. So you, uh, since you have the idea about the parameters now, I will talk about the very generic way. See, when you start the server, it will read the configuration file, right? No. Uh, that, uh, I, I told you that uh, which is a uh, Sybase uh, default location is uh, ASE underscore 16.0. Remember? Uh, sorry, hyphen 16.0. Remember? And in fact, we moved that file and we specified that file in a run server. Remember, let me tell you, let me, let me to, uh, show you the default uh, location also. Give me one moment. Let me share the screen and we see that value. One second. That's a good idea. So, uh, it's fair enough to check the default value and where the configuration parameters are stored. So, here we are. And I'll just show you where the parameters are stored. cd slash opt slash sap slash ase underscore 16 and here you can check that cfg file and you see so many backup files are created here these are all backups 001002 and the actual file is this cfg this is the configuration file from where all the parameters are taken I can just use a vi editor normal to check the parameters and you see the parameters with the default values and the group of parameters you can see that this is all these are all the parameters my friends so it will yeah correct so when you see that it will show the value when you are calling that procedure it will show the which one is correct uh, which one is dynamic and which one is static Okay, yes, SP configure because it displays the complete actual value, the default or static. So I, I'll appreciate uh, uh, Mohit if you go through the presentation again and then you try a few commands and then I believe you will not have doubt. Then if you have any doubt, I should discuss the doubt after that. I think that is the right way. What say? Correct. Okay. So, yes, they are stored in a table also. They are stored in a table also. I remember I told the, the table name. No, directly it will not until as you call that procedure. SP configure with right option. Right. And the current values are there in a separate table. You remember there were two tables. All right. Yeah, and now I appreciate that if you practice these commands and you complete the installation and you come back to this level where you have tried uh, all the parameters and we continue after that. Okay, thank you for this.